detrimental. It's so important for people to really not only listen to this, but to listen to this and take action on it and also spread the word. Um, my opinion and everything I've found and, and been researching tells me that there's going to come a time, and I, I believe it's going to be sooner than later, that you will own nothing, you won't be happy, but that's, that's their agenda and that's their goal, like WEF said, the World Economic Forum and uh, a bunch of the other playmakers that are in this whole uh, scam, scheme. So with that, I just want to bring some realization here and get people thinking a little bit. Now think of physical items, real items that holds real wealth, real, real value to it, and has a real use case. Things that are not real, that are, are not physical, they're not real. They might be real to the sense of uh, it's a sensory thing or it's, it's in your head type deal or you can use that to exchange digits with someone else for something else because they believe the, the whole uh, digit scam or the whole dollar scam or fiat scam, whatever it is. So because you have that, people are have and are, are continuing to lose more and more of their actual physical items and their, their actual rights and their wealth and uh, everything that their family has had or could have, uh, it just seems to be going away. Whether they know it or not, um, it seems like everyone's in this to try to make the fastest, quickest buck, not worry about what's going to happen when, or what's going to happen if, or what's going to happen. No, they should be asking, what can I be doing to strive for my goal? How can I get to this point? How can I get to this, you know, dream for my family, whatever the case is. So I just want to go over some things like I said. So think of money. I got money here. I got money. I got cash. All right. Cash. They call it money. And it doesn't matter what ink's on it, what the numbers are. It's all the same thing. Right here, I, it says 100. And I get a couple of things that say 20. And then another one that says 5. These are the Federal Reserve notes. And they hold the value because people believe in it. They have confidence in it. But eventually that will dissipate. That will go away. Just like every other fiat currency there's ever been. And ever will be. Uh, for example, uh, I got... Oh, hold on here. So, for example, I got a, 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 a ton of these. I mean, they have ink on them. They have different numbers on them. Um, they're from all over. Uh, Honduras. Um, Iraq. There's uh, Uruguay. I mean, there's just any day. There's 500, 900, 20. There's, you know, 1,000 marks, that kind of stuff. Um, they're just... They're just paper. That's all they are. They have no value to them right now. There was a time that people used this for trade or barter or, you know, commerce because the government said that has that has to be the case. So people went along with it. Well, eventually, after it lost most of its wealth, if not all of the wealth, and people got brought down and, and tore down, and they really left with nothing in their hands but this, which cannot do anything, can't buy them food, can't buy them goods, services, nothing. So they left holding the bag of what essentially is nothing. It's crap. So, um, like even even like, so what's a millionaire? What's a billionaire? Well, it depends on your, your perspective of it. Because right now, I mean, I know this, I've showed this before too. I have this in a, a case because it has some sort of uh, remembrance of it. But I'm a trillionaire. This is a $100 trillion bill. And this had real value. This had real use case. This one here, per se, by the time it was done being printed, I believe it lost all of its purchasing power by the time this was printed and off the printers into the, the, the community, into the society, the people. Um, but there's $100 billion bills. There's multiple billion-dollar bills from Zimbabwe also that had 
real use case, real value that people used. And it was ridiculous amounts, like a loaf of bread would cost in the billions. And that's what happens. And that's what is happening right now. Yes, I know. We're in inflation, and it it's like, seems higher than it's ever been in people's lives, for the most part. And it may be. But it's not going away. It's, it's not like we're at the top. It's, it's just getting started, in my opinion. It's going to continue to get worse and worse. That brings me to, we talked money there. That brings me to this here. I got, you ha used to have coins. You used to have dollars, paper, and then at the same time you also had coins. This is a quarter and a dime. These are pre, these are 1964 or older, quarter and dime. So right now, the melt value of this is $4.25 for this quarter. That's the melt value of the silver, because it's 90% silver. And this dime, the melt value of this dime, is just around $1.75. That's the melt value. So right here, together, these are more than, you know, $5. Quite a bit more than $5 for a quarter and a dime. And this is what people would work for and they would get in return, they could go to the bank and, and get rolls of quarters or dimes or whatever. They would get this, and this is what they use for trade and barter and exchange. And then over time, they took that out. So like right here, I have another quarter and a dime. These are post-1965. These are older. I mean, I mean, these are newer, not as old as the other one. And this one here... You can buy something that costs a dime in the store. They'll accept it right now. Not what a dime would buy, you know, um, maybe a month ago, maybe two years ago. It can't buy that anymore, but it can buy today what a dime will buy. This, no more. This quarter. This is a quarter. This will buy what a quarter will buy today. It's not even a can of soda. I mean, that's, that's nothing today. Uh, and not what you can buy five years ago. No, just what it can buy today, what it can purchase today. Because it's, inflation is so high. This is, there's no real value to this. There's no bell value to this. Like the difference here between these two quarters is tremendous. It's $4, $4.25. This has value, $4.25. And melt value of the silver, this has zero. This has no value whatsoever. It's worthless. It's just a piece of junk. That's all it is. Same size, same thing, called the same. One has real value that you earned when you worked and you know put your labor in. The other doesn't. And today, you can still get this. And this is where you get paid for your work, which is nothing. And so talking about the, uh, the 64 or older uh, quarters and uh, dimes and stuff, and change, constitutional um, currency, whatever they want to call it, uh, junk, silver, that's what it's called too. Think of it that way. That's what people got paid, like I had said. That's, if you worked, you know, you, you worked and were making a buck an hour, um, or two bucks an hour, let's say, making two bucks an hour, doing whatever you're doing back in the 60s, you got two dollars, and then your two dollars, you could turn into this. These are two half. I mean, these are two half dollar bills, two fifty cent pieces in each hand, so four total. So right here, these because these are sixty four or older. Right here is like thirty four dollars in silver content. This is thirty four dollars right here because you worked two hours. Nineteen sixty three. 1962, 1964, you worked two hours and you got paid in this. Not two hours, sorry. Two dollars an hour. You worked an hour, you got paid in this. It's two dollars. Now it's worth $34. It has that value. It's not worth that because it went up. It's worth that because this has lost its value and it's continuing to lose its value. This fake stuff that's not real money, paper, this is the problem. This is the problem. It's not, it's not the minimum wage. It's not that kind of stuff. It's they took the real wealth and the real substance away 
and out of people, out of society, took it away from them. Yeah, so talking about the, uh, the 64 or older uh, quarters and uh, dimes and stuff, and change, constitutional um, currency, whatever they want to call it, uh, junk, silver, that's what it's called too. Think of it that way. That's what people got paid, like I had said. That's, if you worked, you know, you, you worked and were making a buck an hour, um, or two bucks an hour, let's say, making two bucks an hour, doing whatever you're doing back in the 60s, you got $2. And then your $2, you could turn into this. These are two half, I mean, these are two half dollar bills, two fifty cent pieces in each hand, so four total. So right here, these, because these are 64 or older, right here is like $34 in silver content. This is $34 right here because you worked two hours, 1963, 1962, 1964. You worked two hours and you got paid in this. Not two hours, sorry. $2 an hour. You worked an hour. You got paid in this. It's $2. Now it's worth $34. It has that value. It's not worth that because it went up. It's worth that because this has lost its value and it's continuing to lose its value. This fake stuff that's not real money, paper, this is the problem. This is the problem. It's not, it's not the minimum wage. It's not that kind of stuff. It's they took the real wealth and the real substance away and out of people, out of society, took it away from them. So they're working for nothing, period. Um, just like this set in here, just like this. This is this is a newer, just a buffalo. This is one ounce, one ounce. What it, what is the current rate? Twenty three, twenty four dollars an ounce. And that's what this is going for. And this is on sale. I I think it's a blue light clearance special um, for the price of gold and silver myself because the currency is is blowing up so much. And from there, they're going to digits. They're trying to get rid of all the cash. They're trying to get rid of all this coinage and all the paper. So it's just digits. You're just going to be digits. So digits, do you see the digits I'm holding up? You see the digits I, I'm going to give to my son or, or my wife or, you know, the neighbor or a person who helped me mow the lawn or whatever? I, I gave them digits. Do you see this? No, you don't because it's fake. It's not real. It's a scam. It's a scheme. It's to get everyone out of the real assets, the hard physical assets. Take everything away from everyone else. Don't take it. Allow them to give it. Allow them to volunteer it because this fun stuff over here is better. These sports ball games, these things on TV, these Hollywood things, um, whatever it is, these $5, $10 day lattes, or coffees, those are better. I'll spend my money on the entertainment and stuff, and, and I won't worry about anything else because I'm going to own nothing and be happy. That's the sediment of it. I'm going to own nothing and not have any stress or worry about anything. Well, until you have to, until you no longer can do anything without asking for permission. Does that sound familiar? Asking for permission? I can't add on to my house unless I pay for permission. I have to go buy a permit. I have to go get a permit to do this on my land. I have to go get a, get a permit for this. I have to go get a permit for that. I need a license to fish. I need a license to hunt. I have to purchase these items to do this stuff. Does that sound familiar? That's what it's going to be like. That's what it's going to be like. I, I want to go get some food. I want to go um, to this park or whatever. Or I'm going to go to this restaurant. No, 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 you're not unless you pay for a permit to drive that distance, and then you pay for a permit to go to that location that's far away from your house, unless you pay for a permit to get together with some other people that aren't really approved, so you gotta pay for the permission to do this kind of stuff. Yes, it sounds drastic, but that's where it's going. And look at where the stuff was 20 years ago versus today. So, now, if you think of it, gold and silver, Gold and silver, those are the real 
real forms of money. That's it. Nothing else. Not this paper. Not this paper that I showed. Not this coinage. Really, I mean, the coinage has some real value to it. It has silver and 90% silver. So it has some. But there's a reason why there is a, a paper gold market out there. The, it's the ETFs, ex exchange traded funds. And I believe the biggest one, GLD, started in 2004 or 2003. Until then, there, that didn't exist. I mean, yes, the whole thing for the, the market, there was, you know, the futures and that kind of stuff that still existed, but they've, they've gotten larger and larger and more and more advanced so they can get people thinking, well, I'm investing in gold, so I'm safe. So I'm going to buy these contractors, buy these contracts. I'm going to buy these things because I purchased from such and such mining place or such and such company. So I know my gold or my silver is good because I have all these shares, GLD, or all these shares of putting your favorite not numbers or your letters um, for Wall Street because it says I have 100 shares. So I have 50 ounces of gold. It says I do. So, yeah, I paid for it. Well, you don't. You don't. You have something that says you might have some rights to it, but you're far, far down the line. I mean, the first ones, the companies, corporations, the agencies, those ones get paid out first, and then the governments, that kind of stuff. You're at the very bottom. You have invested an interest in it. You paid for it. You may have purchased them or bought them. Maybe you created the whole account. But now, the way it's written, you only have a vested interest in it. You don't own it. You don't own these shares. You don't own these actual ounces of gold. You can't call them up for all these things and say, hey, send me the, the gold. If it's ETF type stuff, GLD or SLV for silver. Um, on that same note, i got a couple of books here. I'm just going to go over and just let you know. So I read this, this book here. I read this uh, 2017, so six years ago. Ponzi Factor. And I read it, I thought it was a great read. And it was really eye-opening. And I don't think I was 100% ready to accept it all. Because I, I, I still thought that... Um, Wall Street and stocks and that kind of stuff had real value to them because, well, if I buy a piece of IBM or Apple or Nike, that means I own part of the company. It used to be like that like years ago, even more than a decade ago. It's not like that anymore. And so I read this and I learned so much. And then I was always in the back of my head over the last few years after since I read this in 2017. It's like, yeah, well, that makes sense. So I've sort of veered what I've done according to reading this and, and backing things up and finding stuff. And then recently I ran across this book here, The Great Taking. And this is by uh, David Rogers Webb. This is an amazing book. This is, this is an amazing book. It's, it's, it's very worrisome or frightening depending on who you are or what you're reading. But this here this book, that book just solidified what I read here. Not all, not all. I mean, what I read here, this book just came out and said, yeah, that's how it is. That's on purpose. That's what they've been doing. That's what they continue to do. And these are their next steps, basically. Who are, who's them? Well, you'll never know who they are. I mean, we're not talking Rothschilds, Rockefellers, that kind of stuff. This is probably bigger than that, in my opinion. Call me conspiracy theorist or whatever, but all I know is every conspiracy theory that I've looked into for the last 10, 12 years, it's pretty much come true. So pretty much, they're not theories anymore once they become facts. They're conspiracy facts. So conspiracy theory is looking into something, learning about it, and going towards it and not believing all the resistance and all the hype and all the indoctrination like you would get in K through 12 or universities or colleges. Um, so I want to say that there. So if you think about real things, so if you buy an ounce of gold and you hold it, physical gold, it's in your safe, it's, it's maybe it's, it's someone else's safe, maybe it's storage uh, or silver, the same thing. You actually, they're real. You hold them, you touch them, you can feel them. Once you have it, you have it. No one can take that away from you. No one has a right. No one has 
uh, anything of that. No one has any ownership of these things because you have it. You own it. If you own shares, ETFs, or even stocks, you don't own those. You don't own those at all. I would say it's basically the same thing as the cryptocurrency market. Yes, there's people out there that say, well, yes, but Bitcoin or XYZ or whatever, um, there's only so many that can be printed because they can't keep making them or whatever. So it's different. Well, it's, it may be different on that end, but it's not different because they're, they're all digital. It's all digital. Nothing you can hold. Nothing has a real use case scenario. Like if you're in an emergency and you need something, you can't physically use it for barter or trade or to help you at all. It's not like having guns and ammo when you need, need it for protection or to hunt. If you have real firearms and real ammunition, that will really help you hunt or help you protect yourself or your family. If you have digit ones, digital ones, yeah, you can shoot a digital deer, but you can't eat those digital things. You might be entertaining, might take up your time, might whatever, but it's not real. That's what they're pushing us, we're being pushed to. And if people don't realize this, it's, it's not going to get any better. It's going to continue to get harder and harder. And they're going to get more and more control. Um, so that, that goes for your bank accounts, your IRAs, your 401ks, that kind of stuff. I mean, just like, so think of this. When you deposit money at, at a New York or Tokyo bank or a bank in Texas or a bank in Colorado or a bank anywhere uh, around the world, you no longer own that money. You no longer own the money that you deposit. I call it currency, but the digits or the paper or the currency deposit, you no longer own that. You no longer own a claim on that. You don't. Well, you no longer own it. Maybe you own a claim on it. I mean, that's, that's it, but that, that, that means nothing. So you own bank credit. That's what you did. I'm giving you these digits or I'm giving you this paper, I'm giving you what you call money. I call currency to the bank and now from that I get bank credits so I have bank credits from the bank and now with that they can let me know if I can or cannot withdraw if I can or cannot um, make a, a wiretap if I can or cannot pay this place or pay for this thing that's not up to me anymore that's up to the bank and their bank credits that I traded them for what I gave them um, so it, it's, you got to think of it. You own a bank credits. Banks are free to deposit as they please. They're free to don't, not allow withdrawals as they please too. Um, typically as a base to leverage, uh, it, it's, it's, it's fractional reserve banking at its best. It's not even that really anymore because they really don't have any reserves at all. Zero. Just like the Central Reserve has no reserves. Or I mean the Federal Reserve. Sorry. Um, so the, the reason why, like I said, the goal of ETF contracts is that exist is to keep the value of fiat. Keep the value of fiat high. As high as possible. So if we didn't have these, I mean, if, if we didn't have the gold contracts, the ETFs, and the gold market and the silver market, these won't be as valued as they are, at least in the, the head of people. Because right now, if you look up whatever gold is today, maybe gold is $1,920, $1,920, let's say. Well, it's really not. It's so much more because if they never did AT, ETFs, you know, exchange traded funds for gold, they just, there's not a gold market, there's not a silver market out there. And people can't swap and trade and keep this this number down of what is a value of gold. The real value of gold would probably be somewhere around twenty thousand dollars an ounce, because that's how little gold there is for how much how much commerce is going on and how much trading, how much bartering, and how much how many assets there. Are. I mean, if you base that off of gold, people say, well, there's not enough gold. There is enough gold. You just need to figure out how many fractions this would be. 
I mean, it's 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 not like well, there's not enough ounces of gold to go around. Well, there's enough fractions of ounces, fractions of fractions of ounces. Yes, it works like that. So the whole reason, like I talked about, the gold ETFs is to keep this market there, to keep pumping all this stuff and all this trading, to have no one realize, well, gold is something you don't want to be in, you don't want to purchase, you don't want to, because it's it's old, it's legacy, it's, it's tradition, that's all it is. And it's, the money, the real money is Wall Street. It's it's the it's the ETFs. It's it's stocks and bonds. That's that's where the real money is. That's what they want you to believe. That's why you talk about that only on these money market shows and that kind of stuff. So if you think about it, if if you can and you have the ability to, I would start purchasing and getting as much gold and or silver that you can. To hold physically, because there will be a, there will be a time of the reckoning or whatever you want to call it, when people are going to understand that well, these aren't worth anything. I don't want this. They don't accept this for food or, or gas or anything. This has no value. I want real stuff. I want food. I want you know water. I want shelter. I want the real items I need to live. But I need something real to exchange with that other people are going to know has real value, real use has, and want. That's gold and silver. I mean, it's in the Bible. It's in the Constitution. Even in the Constitution, no state should use anything other than gold and silver for currency, for trade, for money. And look how bad we've raped that, you know, over the years. Um, so anyways, I, I'm just, I just got to talk about this. So on that same note, so for every ounce of gold, I, maybe it's over 120,000 contracts for every one ounce of real physical gold. So if you own one ounce of real physical gold, there's 120,000 fake paper contracts out there of people that believe they own gold and they don't. But you own it because you bought it for a, a steal, a deal. Same with silver. It's the same thing. Um, so I'm just talking about this. I just I got to get people realizing there's a difference between fake, real, physical, digital. Um, think of movies. Think of music, too. If, if they don't like what's in a movie, they don't like what's in a song, they don't like what's on an album, and you're just you subscribe to a place or you purchased it digitally, they can take care of that. They can get rid of that. I believe there was that uh, thing with Jesse Ventura, um, Conspiracy Theory, I believe his show was called, that he had, I think it was ran for a couple of years, and it did great, great ratings. They didn't, they didn't revamp it or, or you know, have it come back. And people, and then they got rid of it. They no longer offered it. They no longer offered online. They no longer, you can't buy it online, um, that kind of stuff. I believe you can't buy the things through eBay, as far as I remember. And people who saved the episodes on their DVRs, their personal DVRs, they went through and erased the personal DVRs of people. I don't, I'm not saying everyone, but I've heard many, many people who had the episodes of conspiracy theory from Jesse Ventura, got it erased, wiped from their DVD players, or their DVR players, sorry. So something went in there, someone went in there and got rid of it. That's censorship, that's that's theft, a high le highest level. Same with, well, hold on a second, I'm, I'm going a little long, but just like Waiting for Superman, this, this movie. If they don't approve this, what's in here about the school system, and you own a digital copy, they'll wipe it or they'll 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 edit it, they'll censor it. Same with this this a noble lie about the Oklahoma City bombing. If they don't like this and you only own it digitally, they can get rid of it. They can block it. You can't watch it through your subscription anymore, or you have it, you know, 
that you're just watching here and there through Amazon or Apple or whatever it is, they can block you. They can get rid of that. You're no longer allowed to watch this because they said it's not approved because this is Oklahoma City bombing and they don't appreciate or, or agree with stuff being said here. Same with this. This thing on Waco, Rules of Engagement, same deal. If they feel some of this stuff is fake news or um, news that should not be heard or conspiracy news or whatever they want to call it, and you have this only owned digitally, they could censor that, they can get rid of that. If you own the real items, they can't do that. You cannot, it's yours, you can watch it, you can keep it, they can't touch it. Just like books, just like these books that I had, if they don't like what's in here, and you only own it digitally, you only have access to it digitally, they can do stuff about it, they can erase it, they can edit it, they can delete it. If you own it physically like this, they can't, they can't, it's yours. Same with gold and silver. If you own the physical items, they can't touch you. Well, yes, well, what happened in the 1930s with FDR? They confiscated gold. Well, they tried, and they got some people to, but not everyone did. They had scare tactics. That's all it is, it's scare tactics. Scare the people, see who we can go to go along with this, and if we get more than 50%, oh, that's a victory. We won. That's it. But anyways, that's that's all I'm saying about this. I, I just see so much. Uh, people are just going through the motions. They're not living in the real physical world. And I, I really feel there's going to be a detriment to there. Um, anyways, I think you're watching this. If you like, like, subscribe, and that kind of stuff. As always, stay vigilant. Um, so.